It's time to tackle the big hit of 2022, which is Power Washing Simulator. I've played for like an hour. Matt, though, you have played for... I think it's about 22, 24 now. You have power washed for a day straight. It is... It is honestly more washing than I've done in my own home in the past year. It is really... It is such a boring game. And that's where, like, the beauty of it comes in. That's where you get almost everything you would expect from, like, traditional game design and kind of mechanical complexity and joy. And so little of it's designed, so much of it's just because this is a really boring activity. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, uh, as Banji points out, in addition to House Flipper... It's a slice of gaming that is doing exceedingly well right now. So it's had a crazy start for a game that launched out of Steam Early Access and onto consoles. And uh, I mean, there's only like, I think one bug that's been found, which is kind of funny on Xbox multiplayer because you look at the sun too hard and it just goes. <laughs> yeah. But basically, it's been a very successful release. Mm -hmm. Proves a lot of very interesting things about the game's market. Um, and I think behaviors of players that maybe a lot of companies don't think about as much. Maybe the big companies don't think about as much. And maybe a lot of learning could happen. So yeah. it's a game made by Future Lab. And they have done games such as Peaky Blinders, Mastermind, Velocity 2X, and Mini Mac Mayhem. Yeah. I, I remember so, playing uh, uh, Velocity 2X before and going, this is a pretty interesting indie. Not like super great, but like, yeah. oh, this, is, this is like a decent promise from them. Yeah, but like overall, not the most like known about company, right? Not at all. Like not to, at all. to most people. And uh, now what is interesting though, and what made you realize you're giving them even more money, <laughs> is that it's a game backed by Square Enix Collective, which is their UK indie label. Mm -hmm. So it's got proper backing. Um, they could certainly get the game out there. One of the things that you really get when you're kind of in with a publisher is, you know, their network of contacts. So I imagine that's what maybe really helps a game like this be able to get in Game Pass. I think Game Pass is a foundational part of this game's success. And as a game, really, it's like, if you look at any of those Reddits, like, oddly satisfying, it's exactly that. It's the sort of thing, if you think about what is, you know, what's a viral video? What are those just things that are satisfying? And when you look at even the, the basics of, like, opening a loot box, and it's really, really satisfying, like, visually, right? Or, you know, any of the YouTube, the little segment of YouTube that's puzzle boxes. And it's mm -hmm. just that thing that's like fundamentally satisfying on a human level. I remember a while ago, uh, I think it was a father and son business. The two of them would go around like power cleaning uh, carpets and stuff. And they were getting millions of views on YouTube because there's something really satisfying about here's a disgusting carpet. Here's a perfect carpet. Look at that. And I imagine they were actually making more money off the YouTube videos of their carpet cleaning business than they were from the business itself, which I mean, Easy. hey, awesome, right? And really, Power Off Simulator is able to to tap into that. Yeah, they were like had the MA, and they said it was busy. That was where the idea came from. It was the oddly satisfying videos of like, that looks really fun. Can we make that a game? And then they just went and did, and it became very very huge because it's just that idea of like all you do is there's you you're loaded into a level or you're loaded into a garage with like a car or something like a massive like. A nuclear power drill thing as well later on gets a little bit crazy sometimes but you just power wash it that's all it is it's a first person shooter where instead of a gun you have a you have a power washer and you're just cleaning dirt off stuff meticulously and then that's where all of like the kind of almost in the same way that say cookie clicker is a game where you're like what do you do you click cookies well that's how's that engaging and it's like oh no but you see number go up and like oh that like hooks into like a really deeply fat like satisfying part of the human experience of just oh i'm making the progress in this direction almost like in the virtual work sense that drew a lot of people to like early mmos where really they felt that way that like kind of oh people just love going and doing a virtual task that feels satisfying lawn mowing simulator yeah because the context in the virtual world is real it's like and it's easier to do than actually power washing because i mean i could have got my steam mop out of the cupboard and cleaned my floor but power washing simulator is more fun not quite as productive, but it's just about it's it's substantially more fun. Don't worry, Matt. Because it's set up once, that way. Once this game is integrated into the metaverse, you can go and virtually clean Mark Zuckerberg's office. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. And you can live in in total squalor. Yeah. Uh, but like, what well, they have done well is the actual core game mechanics. Exactly. So, like, basically, you've got your different washing fluids, your different like nozzles and stuff like that. The different nozzles, depending on like how wide they are, they will clean off more or less dirt. A different pressure. Um, yeah. And then every individual panel. So the the overall job 
is worth a certain number of dollars. And for every individual panel that you clean, you will you know get an amount of dollars per panel. So they basically break down, and they make it really granular, uh, your success as you slowly make it around. And then for when you're at the very end of cleaning something, there is a button to highlight the little bits that you missed. So they do a pretty good job then of minimizing those times where it's just kind of like a frustrating experience. And they're yeah. essentially focusing most of the game onto the joy of cleaning and they remove the friction from that. And it, I've only played like the first level in a bit and it is just so damn satisfying that I completely understand how you've put a full literal day into playing it. Yeah, it's got kind of the same vibes of like, like you are saying earlier, but like a loot box opening it being satisfying because of like the UX part of it. They've got a little bit of that where as soon as you finish cleaning like one of the granular elements, it'll like have this nice little sound effect and like ping blue for a second. So you know you're done. And you're just going like meticulously power washing because what I tend to do is I tend to have the like the flat 25 degree nozzle and I just kind of go down, move left, up, move left very meticulously because that's kind of how I like to clean as opposed to going mental. You know, you see people and they're just kind of cleaning whatever part, whatever. I have like a very structured approach. And that may sound like I'm kind of making it sound a little bit boring. But the thing is that you, you can see different people tackle the like and approach the level in different ways. And there's something about that that makes it really satisfying. Yeah. In the sense that any kind of simulation game is literally like the mechanics of what you're simulating are opened up to you in a way. Where it's not quite as simple as kind of, you know, uh, just a, just just clean it, job done. That's kind of true. But it's all of the possibility in the same way that like movement in a 3D platformer is what makes it important. Sure, you can kind of go, oh, well, it's satisfying enough to kind of just go forward and do it like reasonably. But the point of a 3D platform is you have so much freedom and so many ways to approach the level. There's all that exploration. There's all that kind of discovery. There's can you make that jump? Can you find different ways to get around the level? There's a little bit of that going on here in terms of like the, I guess the surprising mechanical depth, despite the game being mechanically very simple. Because yeah. it's not realistic at all. It is nowhere near realistic. Like there's none of the runoff calculated, nothing like that. It is very simply, you have pressure that you're applying with your hose. And based on your hose's stats and the like stats of the dirt, you'll either clean it or not. Sometimes you have to go slower on harder dirt to get more pressure on it. Sometimes you can get the 40 degree dolls and just go blah and the whole thing's clean. And that's the thing where that's just like, that's video game. Yeah. That is just video game. You're suddenly thinking about the geometry of the thing in front of you rather than a game system. It's, and I think yeah. about, uh, say, even the lawnmower sim game that hmm. I don't think it's been like an explosive success, but I'm fairly sure the lawnmower sim has actually been successful enough. Now I think back to mowing lawns and, it, you know, if it's the generic case of you have a square of grass there's going to be a perfectly efficient way to do that. Yeah. But I remember part of our garden kind of goes in like that, and then it goes in like that. Almost uh, like a big cue ball, or pool cue. Yeah. Po not pool, uh, bowling balls. Bowling cue. What are they called? Bowling alley? Bowling alley, the things you knock over. Bowling oh, pin. Bowling pins. That's it. Almost like a bowling pin shape. Yeah. And for that, it would mean that with, you know, there would be a, di a different optimal method yeah. of cleaning that because of its unique geometry. So in the same way that, like, same way that just tapping into oh well this is a van this is a play park whatever the object that your power cleaning is um yeah it's like the very literal specifics of minutia of the game world i guess it's that thing like in mmos uh like say world of warcraft they've really tried to get people to actually pay attention i think they've probably failed but they want like the reason why they don't have the quest tracker uh they don't want that in wrath of the chain classic is because they want people to actually pay attention to the world and you look at so many of the open world uh, ostensibly narrative games like uh, Horizon and some of the Ubisoft Assassin's Creed and it's like map markers everywhere. Hmm. And it's like, you then look at Elden Ring. Why do people like Elden Ring? Oh, because you're actually paying attention to the world and the mechanics. There's level design. Yeah, you're not thinking as much about like the systems and stuff. And this is, I think, just a really pure distillation of that. It's exactly that where it's, what I would say is like really naturalistic level design where one of the things was it... Um, uh, I can't remember, was it Miyamoto talking about like how much inspiration he takes from the real world for like designing Mario stuff? And like how much so many things were inspired to like a specific visit to a shrine in the locale and the location and stuff. Kind of really made it some parts of it click together in his head. And that to me is kind of where this comes from because like you start off cleaning simple stuff. It's like, here's a fence and the fence is like flat. So you just go up and down, but then something protrudes. 
So you have to hit it from, you have to get it from the front, you have to go around the side, you have to go around the other side. And then if there's a bottom, you have to crouch down and go into the prone position because it just plays like a shooter. Mm. You just have to, you know, double tap control to get down and clean underneath it. And it's this like really naturalistic level design that makes you kind of actually literally look at like a building and go, hi, am I going to clean that? And then because it's not realistic, you've got like reasonable like first person shooter jumping mechanics. You've got step like stepping stools and ladders and stuff, but you can also like platform a little bit. So you can sprint off like a scaffolding to land on top of a house so you can crouch on the house and get a little bit that's really hard to reach underneath a windowsill on like a roof window. And it's stuff like that that just makes it like really enjoyable and fun. And that's the thing where you go, well, it's Power Watch Simulator, what do you mean? And it's like, uh, Goat Simulator is a really sandboxy kind of do whatever you want. There's some design here. Then there's the, what I'm going to call the more, let's say, German-oriented simulator games that are really realistic and really very, like, uh, for people who, you know, a professional would go and maybe enjoy the simulator because mm. it's so realistic. Whereas this is literally a game. Like, it is just an interesting game design form, but so much of it speaks out of the real world. And that's what I've, I've really enjoyed playing it, thinking about that stuff and going, this is really satisfying. And I kind of have a feel for I know why now. And yeah. even comparing it to like, because this kind of popped in my head earlier, I was talking about uh, movement mechanics. You know, whenever you're playing a modern AAA game, right? You're playing something from Ubisoft, something from maybe Sony. Maybe you're going back and playing an old Uncharted. And, well, this is like a tweet I remember from the Tomb Raider game, where someone just remade like one of the climbing scenes, but in grey box form. And it looked so like, oh, this isn't, this is all smoke and mirrors. Yeah. This is literally all smoke and mirrors. All of the danger is completely fake. It's all, oh, the camera's shaking, but the character's not. You just hold the thumbstick forward and close your eyes, and you get to the end of the segment. It's all supposed to be kind of fake feeling. This is like the opposite of that, where there's no fakery whatsoever. And obviously it's a little bit boring in that degree, that degree. But you've got the, the freedom of movement within these mechanics, and that's what makes it so enjoyable. That's where, like, to me, it is basically this is where this is what AAA game design has lost in a, in a large amount of like their movement and their climbing and all that stuff, which is freedom, and not even like freedom to fail, just freedom to kind of be a little bit creative in how you go about it. And that's it. Weird that I had all of those thoughts from fucking Power Wars Sim. Yeah, well, yeah, but, it, but it's interesting. That's why where, it works. It appears yeah. on this fundamental level. Yeah, and even like the upgrade loop, right? It's, you go play uh, God of War, and the upgrade loop is kind of there for no reason and kind of pointless, not really satisfying and kind of distracting from everything else. But then, because this is so simple, the upgrade loop of upgrading your power washer so you're cleaning faster, it's just this, like, multiplicative, oh, I'm cleaning faster, oh, I feel like I'm a better power washer. And uh, you probably are a better power washer because you've gained, gained the skill of knowing how quick to move your mouse or how much uh, your control stick or whatever else. But... The little upgrade loop is just that extra little bit of juice to kind of go, yeah, here. And it's not big, it's not big souped up. It's not like the chests from Vampire Survivors, which are almost a parody of what loot boxes yeah. and chests feel like. It is just raw, straight up. Yeah, you earn some money, do you want to get a better power washer? And when you do, you're like, I can't wait to try this thing out. It's not even any different, like it would be in like a, say a character action game's new weapon. It's not even much different, it's just like stronger. But you're like, hell yeah, this is like a cool loop of, I'm doing some virtual work, the work is satisfying, I'm getting paid, and I'm getting reward. It is that little microcosm of what humans have evolved to find beautifully beautifully satisfying, which is what helped our survival, and it's that encapsulated in game yeah. form perfectly. It is a game that has cut absolutely to the core of what is satisfying in a way that so many games spend, as you said, like so much money in expensive set pieces and stuff like that. Yep. They're just able to get it. I think that's perhaps some of the secret of uh, the secret of this genre. So to just take a look at how the financial performance has been. So 10th in global top sellers in Steam. That is a, I mean, it's, look at there, Steam Deck, Power Wash Sim. <laughs> it is doing so well. Uh, that's, that's massive. It's despite, again, that's despite being free on Game Pass. Yeah. And so with that, right? All while you can get it for free in Game Pass, uh, 10,000 all-time peak. And this is not a multiplayer, or I mean, it, it is a game it for has, multiplayer, it but it's not like, uh, you know, a large, primarily multiplayer dream yeah, game. Yeah, you're not going to have like the big network effect of, oh, yeah. everyone in the Discord servers bought Valheim or V Rising to play together. This is like, you and a mate have maybe bought it, but honestly, I think people are more likely to play this 
mostly by themselves and have like some background noise or podcast on because it is wonderful for yeah. just letting time slip into the abyss. So it explodes out of early access then with its peak. It actually does super well on Twitch. I can't imagine that will last for too long though. That's just, it's the new hotness so people will cover it. But if you can get yourself to actually be the new hotness on Twitch, that is an incredible thing. So it had a 9,000% increase of viewers at its height, just under 60,000 people watching the game. I know like Skill Up did a video on it that was like super well received. That's what convinced me to download it on Game Pass. You look at the Steam reviews. I mean, that is absurdly positive. Basically, people are thrilled. Uh, Steam 250 is even uh, tallying that it's the third most positively rated game in 2022, Crazy. which, you know, number one, you've got Stray, God of War, Power Wash Sim. And you know what's right after Power Wash Sim? Teardown. Yep. And that is another game that's like fundamentally appealing. Uh, if it is, at least the game I think it is, my memory's mm. right. It's also just going there for like what is at its core very satisfying. I mean, even there's like Dorf Romantic below it. <laughs> that's a city builder. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It just goes to show something like what can actually do well on Steam, which to be honest, I find to be really heartening because yeah, often yeah. those Steam charts, they can actually cut through a lot of the AAA negativity that happens on the news. Like if you you know were just covering games like that, it would probably be a happier time. Yeah, people are basically. It feels like I don't even know if people are breaking it, but it's just the conditioning of AAA is just doesn't exist on Steam. It's such an incredible platform. People are like, yeah, fuck it. But what looks cool today, I'm gonna buy it. And Steam have done a great job of letting those actually stand out instead of letting like, because I think that's what happens a lot on the uh, consoles, right? Especially because they're kind of very happy to kind of push their own stuff or take AAA money to be very prominent. Not to say this is like some sort of bribery stuff, but in kind of what benefits them the most is that. Whereas Steam are just like, as always, just the, the libertarian paradise for video games, mostly. Where it's just, yeah, is your game going to sell? Yeah, there it is. We'll give you the display because it's going to sell. Oh, your game's selling more than we thought? You get a higher spot because you're selling better than we thought. That kind of th what the customer wants the most will be most prominently displayed and yeah. has that uh, kind of the chance for success. It's, it's always interesting, the uh, positives and negatives to Valve's philosophical, uh, I mean, their rather philosophical approach to running Steam. Yeah, it um, certainly hasn't helped them make any games. That's no, for sure. definitely not. But it certainly is like, it is a unique place for a platform to be today. And we get to see a lot of the benefits for some of the smaller creators, which is pretty nice. Pretty yes. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. No, Steam is really good at surfacing a game yeah, it to, is. to people. <laughs> yeah, it is just also completely heartless if your game doesn't sell very well, which is the dark side of that, but not the side you often see. Yeah, yeah. So when you think about Game Pass then, it's interesting the sorts of games that they're actually bringing on because mm -hmm. they're not just bringing on games that they kind of know people already like. They are bringing on interesting games that I think they have a high confidence that people would enjoy, but may not necessarily pick up. You know, Hard Space Shipbreaker, House Flipper, those have both uh, appeared and uh, they've, been, they've been popular. They have a few other interesting strategies. Uh, Back for Blood, um, Golf with Friends. Golf with your friends, I think it's called. Mm. Um, and then a wild thing, Crusader Kings 3 is on Game Pass. Like Perfect. <laughs> so that's a lot of things where you know, they're, they're games that certainly people are more willing to try out if they can do it for free under a subscription service. And it seems to be working out really quite well. So I guess... For those perhaps multiplayer games where as a consumer you feel a degree of risk buying them because you don't know if you're going to have friends to play them with you know you don't have confidence that that game is going to go the distance at least with game pass you you know this what well, you, you lose some some time if you check a game out and you end up not liking it or some not being people playing it so i think there's definitely there's just a, a slice of games that if they can get curated into game pass they can be successful where they otherwise would have had a lot of things holding them back. I would love yeah. to see for Aliens uh, Fireteam Elite what its pre and post uh, numbers are because we know that that is a game that struggled quite a bit. I think it had a decent enough little launch, but it was very much a spike and then it went way down, then Back for Blood comes and that <laughs> ends up getting quite a lot more. But then Aliens Fireteam Elite and funny enough, Back for Blood are both just sitting there in Game Pass. So does that mean it's a situation where actually both games can be pretty happy who knows who knows basically yeah. but point being here there's something very essential very human 
and a lot of these games are able to tap into it. Another one, uh, another game that did this really well is, is it Unpacked? Unpacked? Oh, you know the game where you're yeah. basically, yeah, and they have the environmental storytelling of like, well, this is clearly this person's childhood bedroom, this person's, you know, uni halls. Yeah. And you can, through the bits that you are unpacking, piece together what's happened to that character. It actually works really well. And also, it's fundamentally satisfying. Think about, like, the things that have taken off on Netflix. I mean, okay, this was years ago, but the whole, like, um, Mary Kondo thing, right? Oh, the, Mary Kondo was very, very big, yeah. Yeah, and I, I didn't know this, but apparently the whole thing of plastic containers, they started selling, like, absolute hotcakes in America huh. um, based off some TV show that... I think it was a TV show that was basically about finally sorting things and putting them in con containers, <laughs> yeah. uh, like, color-coded containers. It's like that people watch that shit because it's satisfying. The sorts yeah. of things that end up being TikToks that are satisfying. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, if you were to take this to the extreme and go R-rated, I know there is an entire niche of popping zits oh, God, and yeah. stuff that Ugh. completely, like, it gives me the uh, uh, reflex and I see it, but that's massive in YouTube. I mean, um, So who's going to make the simulator for that? Yeah, I mean, it probably follows the same logic as, like, mukbang stuff. Yeah. Where that's just like, yeah, that's like a fundamental human desire that you get to see unfold. And you're like, satisfying? That's it. Okay. Avocado that's simulator. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully him taking a break from YouTube will result in better health. Oh, I didn't I know that. Yes. Yeah. He took a break from YouTube. He apparently he said he just go once he hits 30. He's done. He hit 30 recently. So hopefully, hopefully he appears in better form. All soon. I knew is that he was a meme and I kind of thought he was a copper cab like situation where he kind of plays it all up for the character, but he, I had no idea. A hundred percent definitely is very big, uh, very big character, but also you can't, you know, yeah, be, the same time. you can't be a character and also be 400 pounds, but just, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, I suppose if you're thinking about a game to make, um, one way of doing it is, you know, I mean, our way, which is just, hey, this is a story you want to tell. We want to make it really cool. Another way, arguably one that could probably get you more success, is to think about things that humans are, that we just gravitate to. You know, even some very fundamental things like magnets. People fucking love magnets. Mm -hmm. Puzzle boxes. You know, those like genres in YouTube that people just seem to watch and watch and watch and watch because there's just something very raw, very elemental in its appeal. That's what power washing sim was able to do. Yeah, and it might seem very boring on the surface, but it turns out that a video game doesn't have to be exciting to be fun. Yeah, it can be meditative. Yeah, fun can come in many different forms, and even like the meditative stuff feels good. So I think that's what people don't understand whenever, you know, when people want to play a game like Diablo, they don't want high stakes action that's really difficult. They kind of want to, I guess, just chill out. You mean all the people who are playing Diablo Immortal, they're not there because they're thinking, Oh shit, bros! We've got to collect the shards of the Soul st World Stone! No? Oh no! The demons will get the world! Yeah. I mean, no. It's just their version of power washing sim. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Like those ARPGs. It's again, the very fundamental human thing. So yeah. Hey, it is food for a thought. Fundamental shit that works. Let me know what you think. What's your experience been like in this game? And I guess, are there any games along the same lines as Power Washing Sim that maybe you've played, you've enjoyed similarly, but they haven't quite had that big explosion yet? Because I wonder how little marketing would it do to tip the scales enough that based off the success of this, there's something else that appeals to just something that's very raw, something very tangible. If you watch any footage of this game it's tangible gameplay it's yeah fascinating so mm. let me know that's it for me and Matt. so we'll see you next time